I woke up on October 6th feeling like I had symptoms of the flu, and that's really all I thought it was. I'd been doing research on COVID because I wanted to stay up on it, and I thought that it was severely overblown. I thought that people were making too big of a, a thing out of it. Even though the vaccine wasn't available at that time, I was still following all the protocols. I was masked up, distancing, staying at home as much as possible other than work. On October 9th, I decided it was probably time to get myself tested. It actually came through my primary care physician that I had tested positive for COVID on the 12th, but I thought I was gonna write it out at home. After four days of 104.1 degree temperature, I wasn't eating, I wasn't doing anything. There was weight loss. I was really starting to struggle to breathe on the 15th. I woke my wife up at two o'clock in the morning and told her it's time to take me in and she took me to Good Samaritan. And we got up to the emergency room doors and they put him in a wheelchair and they wouldn't let me go with him which was really scary. And then they texted me and said that I could come in and say goodbye to him. He was just slumped over in the wheelchair and I knew he was really sick, but all I could do was drive home and wait to hear from somebody. When I made the decision to tell them to ventilate me, I didn't think I was gonna come off of the ventilator. But I knew if I didn't go on, I didn't have a chance. I remember leaving a message for Tara. I said, tell my wife that I love her. And then I had a, a little panic in my head that said, you can't leave anybody out. Everybody needs to know that you love them. So I needed to get as many people's names out of my mouth as I could. The thing about COVID, it's difficult to predict who is gonna survive. The fact that Matt not only survived, but he's doing really well and not on oxygen and almost at 100% is a testament that he had a good team and his spirit and his family were strong. A nurse or a doctor, they woke me up a little bit and said, we know that you have anxiety, we want you to relax for just a little bit and we're gonna get the test started. And after about a minute, she said, okay, Matt, I don't want you to panic, but you've been breathing on your own for a minute now. We just need you to do it for a little bit longer. But I don't know how long it was before the doctor actually came up to me, but he bent down and said, congratulations, you kicked COVID's butt. And I thought, that's fantastic. And my first question to him was, does that mean I get to go home now? I could see that he smiled and he said, unfortunately, the easy part's over. I wish you good luck on the rest of your journey. When I came home from the hospital on November 10th, it was one of the hardest things to do to get from the car to the couch. It was more scary than anything when I got there to pick him up. They started trying to teach me how to do the oxygen tank and what to do if it stopped and how to change hoses. That wasn't what I was prepared for. It was really, really scary because I realized that it was my responsibility to keep him breathing. Well, it's been almost a year to the day and I'm not, still not fully recovered. I learned really early and the doctors told me when I went home that I would need to celebrate the small victories. If I could take one walk down the hallway without my walker that day, that was a good job. Small victories in the beginning, it took about two and a half months of doing that before I was able to go to pulmonary rehab where things started turning into big picture and getting exciting. If I had a time machine and could go back in time and advise people how not to get sick from COVID and do their best to prevent being hospitalized from COVID, I would say get a vaccine, take care of yourself and see your doctor, take care of your underlying medical conditions and spend time with your family and friends and follow the guidelines of social distancing and wearing masks and getting vaccinated. I want to thank the care team in the emergency room, the care team in the ICU, all the way to pulmonary rehabilitation. They all played a key role in me being able to do what I did. Without them, I wouldn't be here, and I'm blessed.